Slap bang in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the biggest ship of its era. The men on board have no ordinary mission. They're trying to change the shape of the world. In the 1850s, the Victorians are wrestling with a problem. Their world is just too big. They have managed to shrink some of it with networks of telegraph cables that carry messages instantly across cities, countries, even continents, but not across most of the world's surface. Because when information hits the oceans, it screeches to a halt. Good news and bad, profit and loss, declarations of love and war all have to travel by ship. Send a quick note to America? You'll be waiting four weeks for the reply. So, why not wire up the ocean? <laughs> well, they try and fail spectacularly. The cable's too thin, the ships are too small, the job's just too big. And this isn't the only project to go spectacularly wrong. Engineering megastar Isambard Kingdom Brunel has had another one of his big ideas to build a Victorian supertanker, six times bigger than any other ship afloat. She's called the Great Eastern, and she's cursed from the off. The construction company goes bust, the launch fails, and then Brunel dies, leaving his friend Daniel Gooch holding the baby. He vows to turn her fortunes around. With this, engineers have designed a new telegraph cable to work undersea. They make 2,300 miles of it, enough to reach America, but so heavy that no ship on Earth can carry it, except the Great Eastern. They attach one end of the cable to Britain, and together with 120 sheep, 20 pigs, and 12 oxen to feed the 500 men on board, they set off on their mission to shrink the Atlantic. Day in, day out, night after night, through storm and fog, they pay the cable into the ocean. While in mission control, they watch anxiously to see if the cable's still getting a signal from the motherland. And they almost make it. But just a few days off the American coast, the signal flatlines. Disaster. The cable snapped. It's over. But Gooch is not the quitting kind. He and his business partners stake their own fortunes on one final gamble. A year later, the Great Eastern heads west again. And on Friday, July the 27th, 1866, the dream is still alive when the coast of America is sighted and the connection is finally made. Two continents touch, clasp hands, no longer so far apart. Gooch and the Great Eastern didn't stop there. They took on the world putting new lines on the map, new ways for nation to speak unto nation. Making the earth a smaller place and the information age a reality. Mm -hmm.